Hello, welcome to the show. So tonight I want to show you how I got the uh, Digitact and the Digitone to talk to each other. And more importantly, which I didn't find a lot of information out there, but it isn't too, too hard to set up, is how they get the key step hooked into both of these so they can be used to both and also to be used with some other external hardware you may have. So this is kind of the setup I got going on right here, and I'm just going to walk you through it and show you how I got everything here to, to basically play nice. So let's start with these two first, because this is where most of the, the work takes place. So on the Digitact, we have the left and right outputs going into the left and right inputs on the Digitone. And also going into the Digitact, I have the MIDI out on the key step, going into the MIDI in on uh, the uh, Digitact, and also the MIDI out from the Digitact is going into the MIDI in of the Digitone. So there you go. And from there, we have the MIDI out from the Digitone, which is being fed down to this uh, MIDI solutions box I have, which basically takes that MIDI out signal and sends it to four other pieces of hardware, including uh, the Volca Keys, the Yamaha CP, and the Behringer TD3 and Model D that we have up here. So that's the wiring. And then from there, all the outs except from uh, the Digitact are going into my mixer, which are being fed out to my FX box here, which gets fed to, all that gets fed to the, uh, the SSL2, which is the audio interface, which basically will bring a signal into the computer and Reaper here. It's, it's an example pattern. I'm not trying to show off my musical prowess with that. So uh, anyways, regardless, I'm just trying to show off or not show off, but show you how to get everything to play nice tonight. And so we're going to do a little bit of a demo in a sec how this all works together. But right now, let's go into the MIDI uh, settings on each of these devices. So this is where most of the work with the setup uh, takes place is in the settings menu in both of these devices. And I'm going to zoom in to the Digitact here so you can see what I'm doing and where I'm looking at. So basically from, uh, I just hit this nice gear button menu here, which takes me to the settings. And it's important to know for these settings, uh, they have to be redone every time you create a new project in both the Digitact and the Digitone. So just, just notice if you create a new project and you're wondering why all these things aren't playing together, well, you, you have to redo these uh, mini steps. And so what did I do in the MIDI config? First thing that we want to look at is the sync. Now this is, this is interesting. So the clock receive, uh, considering I do have the key step hooked into this sucker is if I push play on the, on the key step, I can control the clock. So you can see, I can control the clock on, on the key step, which is kind of handy. The only problem, it doesn't stick. So for example, if I hit play on the uh, Digitac, which is kind of the master clock of everything else, you can see it, it speeds up. And considering if I hit play on this, I'm gonna be stuck in art mode or sequence mode. Uh, I don't wanna keep that, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you what that, that clock receive uh, can do for you. With maybe if you don't have a key step or you have another MIDI controller that plays nicer than that, you may wanna turn that on. But for uh, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna disable that. So if I hit play on the key step now, which I'll do now, it doesn't mess with the tempo. It doesn't take the tempo from the key step. It's gonna keep the tempo on the Digitact here. Now, the clock send I do have on because I want to send that over to the Digitone, which will keep uh, these two boxes in sync. Transport receive. Uh, I This is another interesting one, because like I said before, I have the key step hooked into the Digitac. So if I hit the play button on the Digi, or pardon me, if I hit the play button on the key step, like now, kicks off the sequencer and everything. So I do not want that enabled because sometimes I'm going to play with the keys and sometimes I'm going to hit the play button to enable the ARP and sequencer. So in my case, I'm going to disable that on the Digitact. Okay. Transport send. I want that on. If I don't have that on and I hit play, well, you're hearing something on the Digitone, but I think it's just because I accidentally recorded a trig on one of the MIDI tracks we'll get into later. But Really, it doesn't, there I'll zoom out again so you can see, and trust me on this, 
is, let me make sure this is off. So if I hit play, you can see it doesn't enable the sequencer on the Digitone, but if I hit yes, which I want it to be set up as, so it does enable transport send. Kicks off the sequencer on the Digitone, which is what I want. So we're gonna zoom back in and you can see what I'm doing. So that's good. Uh, I don't want uh, program channel receive enabled because I'm not expecting anything coming into here to change the program for me. But I do want program channel send. So what that does is if I change the pattern or the bank on the Digicart, it's going to make the exact same change on the Digitone. So if I have two projects, which I'm planning to do, and align the projects with the patterns and banks, I can make full songs involving both of these machines are full, big, long patterns. Uh, so it keeps these two machines in sync. If, for example, I set up a chain to go through a bunch of patterns in a bank, it should do the same on the Digitone, or if I trigger it manually, it should do it on the Digitone too. So that's what I want to happen there. So that's why I have a program channel send enabled. So those are kind of your basic sync settings. So just to review again, uh, clock send is enabled, transport send is enabled, and program channel, uh, 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 program change send is enabled. All right, port config is all pretty much uh, the standard setting, so I didn't mess around with anything in here. Uh, one thing I'm going to get into eventually is output to MIDI plus USB. I would like to use some of the remaining MIDI tracks I have available on this guy because I am doing most of the MIDI control for external hardware through the Digitone, which is freeing up uh, some MIDI tracks on the Digitact. Uh, I'm hoping I can hook the USB up to come on my computer and try using the Digitact to, to run some VSTs. But we're not going to get into that tonight. Maybe I'll do some experimenting and film that later if uh, for, for fun. Okay, so I didn't really change anything in this menu, which was the which was the uh, port config, but I did do some changing in the channels menu. So on the Digitact, I disabled all these track channels because I'm using track one, two, three, and four, uh, the mini channel one, two, and three, and four on the Digitone for its tracks. Five, six, seven, eight, I've kept clear uh, just because I might use those to uh, as MIDI channels for VSTs. And then uh, these, these are the MIDI tracks, which I have disabled as well. You'll notice I've set auto channel on the digit, Digitac to 10, uh, which is, so if I change the channel on the key step to 10, it's gonna play automatically whatever is on the Digitac uh, screen, which is, which is handy for me. Uh, I'll zoom back in here. And then program change in while well, I'm not getting any program changes in. But I did have to set this because I set the auto channel on the Digitone to nine. This was initially set to auto, so of course it wasn't uh, changing the program changes on the Digitone. When I, even though I had program change uh, receive or send enabled, I did have to change this to nine uh, manually to get that, the final step to get that to work. So that's all the changes I've done on, on the Digitact. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the settings on uh, the Digitone. Now, before we jump right back into um, the, uh, the MIDI settings on the uh, Digitone, uh, one thing you need to do is if you, if you bring the, uh, the left and right outputs from here into, into here, uh, into the end on the Digitone, you're gonna have to do one final setup and you're gonna have to do this for every pattern, which is a little annoying. I haven't figured a way to make it stick at a project level or a default level. But if you hit function and LFO there, which will take you to the master page, you're just gonna have to set your in left and in right levels to around 100, and then fully crank the left and right uh, pan to the appropriate positions. And uh, that will bring in sound uh, from the Digitone, uh, uh, pardon me, from the Digitact into the Digitone. If these are, if these are dropped down to zero, uh, which I'll do quickly here, so. Those are disabled. If I zoom out and start hitting nothing, right? So those have to be uh, up to 100. Now, if I had uh, two hands, a quick way to, to dial these in quick to 100 is I think is to hold down function and this knob. Otherwise, you kind of just got to 
dial it in as best as you can slowly, but do the function and the twist and it will bring it right to 100 for you. You don't have to do uh, dexterity games to get it lined up right to the 100. But uh, So I'm not making music right now close enough. Uh, cool. Okay, so you have to do that and once again under the master menu uh, to actually even get volume in from the Digitact uh, tracks 1 to 8 there. Okay, so once you do that, go into the settings part of, part of me again and we'll go to oops pushing the wrong buttons go to midi config our friend midi config so a little bit different here uh i am receiving the clock uh because of course i want to get the tempo from the digitact i am sending the clock out because remember this is hooked up into four other pieces of hardware so i want to send the same tempo clock out to all those I am res I am sending in transport uh, receive because of course if I push play or stop or whatnot on the Digitact I want it to uh, be picked up on the Digitone. I am not sending it out just because if I enable transport send uh, whenever we kick things off it's going to trigger uh, the TD3 over here and start playing its loops and uh, I want to be able to handle that manually. I don't want that to go off every time I push play. I am accepting program channel receive. I'm not sending out program channels uh, send at this point. So that's my basic sync settings. And for the port config, uh, once again, I didn't touch any of this. This is a little standard. And the channels, um, yeah, so I, I got track one, two, and three, and four uh, to MIDI channel one, two, and three, and four. And other than that, I set the auto channel on here to nine, and I'll get I'll get into the reasoning and logic I have going on there in just one second. And then I left these both to auto, which is just fine. So that's the basic setting, at least on these uh, two boxes to get them to to talk nice. And that's what's what's been done so far. So um, how how and that's how they get the key step to work on both. So you're you're saying how well how do you get the key step to work on both? So right now, remember I have the key step set to channel 10 and which is allowing me to play the auto channel which is set to one if i change it to part two maybe not hear it very well part three whoops it's not me part three so you get the idea right it's just going to play channel 10 is going to play whatever is on the screen here so how do i use that to play on the uh digital Okay, so now you get how like the 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 tracks work with auto channel ten on the um, on the Digitac. Let's how do I use that auto channel ten to to play on the, the uh, Digitone? Well, remember this is picking up. So the key step is set to channel ten right now. Anything on channel ten on the uh, Digitac is going to play whatever is on the screen here. So the first mini part here. I have it set to talk to channel 9. So that means basically, even though the key step is set to channel 10, anything I play right now is going to channel 9, which is the auto channel for the Digitone. So that if you're if you're still with me, it basically means when I am in MIDI track A here, I can play whatever is on the screen of the Digitone. So for example, I can play part 1 here. the octave there a couple bit and there's part two so you get the idea it will play whatever's on here including the MIDI tracks which are set up uh, already so you can see on MIDI what average has set the channel 13 which I believe is the Volca keys that's the Yamaha CP that's the Model D, and I believe this will be the TD3. Yeah, so that easy to be able to get the key step to at least uh, talk and play of everything. And a couple other cool tricks with this setup is, yes, I can use MIDI A, but I can then set MIDI B, C, and D, and E to be against the uh, tracks one, two, and three, and four. And what's really cool about that is the Digitone comes with uh, two LFOs, I believe. Or yeah, just one LFO. Or what, I believe. Sorry, I'm in the MIDI tracks. That's why I'm getting confused. It has one LFO for the MIDI track, but for um, 
but for its actual tracks it has two LFOs uh, but what's nice about this setup is beyond those two LFOs I can actually enable an additional LFO uh, through um, the Digitech so for example let's uh, play the sample so that's this uh, this uh, MIDI E is this sound so let's let's really mess it up of a weird LFO here so uh, let's set the destination to be something very uh, let's do pitch bend because you're definitely going to hear the effects of that and we'll, we'll make the depth uh, super uh, big so it'll be quite drastic let's hear how it sounds now hearing any difference did I lie to you it's funny because I can do it on here the pitch bend will work on here just so you know I'm not lying if I enable pitch bend on here and I push play again <laughs> I can sequence that change into the sequencer. And just so you know, I'm not lying. If I push uh, record, you can see all the trig locks or whatever it's thrown in there. So let's clear those out. Whoops, no, I don't want to copy that. I want to, there we go. Fix the pitch bend. So that's one of the things I like to do, but I'm confused why the LFO is not playing nice. So let's just review our settings here again. So what do we have here? Multi, that's a multiplier for the uh, the wave, the LFO wave. Uh, let's just set it to something random. That's retrig mode. So let's just keep a, a steady wave going. The source is, oops, fade in and out. We'll just make sure that's off. Uh, and yeah, we want, you know, there's, I can use a whole bunch of different CC values, but I just want the pitch bend to go crazy to demonstrate that you can use LFO. So let's crank it up and let's do continuous wave. This is start phase, whatever. You know, we'll do a curved sine wave. We'll put a lot of speed on it. We should hear it. Now it works. You saw what I did, right? <laughs> I did the exact same. Was it the fade that screwed it up? No, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and watch the video because that is extremely weird. I swear to God, I, I set it up right initially. <laughs> Maybe there's ghosts in this machine. I don't know, but at least it worked then. Maybe I don't know what I did. That's really weird. Is it because I wonder if because I wonder if it's because I didn't have pitch been enabled as a, a function under this uh, source page so let's turn off pitch bend because that's a little annoying if you have to enable that for the LFO to work it's one extra step let's see so you heard it work before that's it figured out ladies and gents there it is so good to know now I'm not sure if this works for the other like I haven't played around this much as you can tell um, I'm not sure if this is the, the fact for these other sources. I'm guessing for the sources they probably have to be enabled. It would be interesting to see if the same is true for the CC values as well. Because you can go under this, uh, not this menu, but in here you can, you can, you can set the, uh, you can set the uh, CC send. So you can see, I can switch, I wonder if I, yeah, you can set them in here. But anyway. Ah, that's not really the scope of this. That was just a demonstration. So uh, I think I think I'm gonna call it there before we get deeper into any other uh, mud holes. But uh, yeah, I hope that gives you a, a good overview of how these two boxes can talk together. And then if you're like me and you want to hook a key step into it with some other hardware, how you can make that possible as a 
uh, as part of this setup. Um, like I said, I'm not sure. Uh, I think the more traditional route is I see a lot of people doing all the MIDI out of the Digitac to other devices. And I can see why if you have a lot of um, physical hardware where you have eight different MIDI tracks where on the Digitone you only have four, but I'm in a nice position here where this desk only has room for four really other devices and I'm hoping to pair up those extra MIDI tracks I have left over because I'm only using nine as uh, nine as the auto track and uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 here uh, or MIDI A to to E so that gives me three other MIDI tracks I have available to send to VSTs which I'm going to try over USB to my laptop but also these aren't necessarily uh, 10 to 11, 10 to pardon me 13 aren't exactly completely necessary too I'm only using them for LFO or triggers uh, trig locks to to change the pitch and whatnot uh, yeah so like I said I will shut up now uh, thank you for watching and I hope this was uh, somewhat helpful and I'll I'll see you around for the next one guys. So thank you and take care.